Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on types of groups. The context for my discussion of types of groups is mental health counseling. And mental health counselors are likely to interact with, at some point in their careers, most of the groups that I'm going to discuss in this video. So I'm going to start with the three types of groups where a mental health counselor is least likely to be a facilitator and then move on to the two types of groups where a mental health counselor will likely have a role as facilitator. So the first type of group is a task group. And these groups focus on specific concrete goals. And they're often related to work environments. So task groups attempt to harness the positive, productive processes of group dynamics to achieve specified goals. The content of the group is focused on achieving the goal and not on any real interpersonal dynamics that may occur. These groups are traditionally discussion-based and involve decision-making skills and problem-solving skills. So common examples of a task group would be ad hoc committees, that is committees that are designed to achieve a specific goal, or product development, for example. Successful task groups establish clear roles for the expectation of productivity, how members can confront one another in a positive and useful way, attendance, and confidentiality. Successful task groups also frequently reevaluate their own successes or failures as the task group progresses toward its goal. Task groups don't, do not have any clinical component, so a mental health counselor would not interact with the task group uh, with the purpose of remediating mental health symptoms, but certainly a mental health counselor could be a part of a task group working toward some sort of work-related goal. The next type of group is psychoeducational, and this is a fairly broad category of group. Uh, typically, psychoeducational groups are highly structured and time-limited. So the different activities in a psychoeducational group are usually planned from the beginning, from the onset of the group, and those plans involve set activities that are to occur in each group. So these groups are developed and implemented to prevent problems and to encourage learning and skill development. And unlike counseling and psychotherapy groups, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, psychoeducational groups often do use subgroups as part of the activities that are planned. Psychoeducational groups typically have a theme and examples of these groups would be a bereavement group, an anger management group, a group that helps group members manage finances, or a group that teaches parenting skills. It's not unusual for mental health counselors to run psychoeducational groups. However, that's not the primary group type that's associated with mental health counselor facilitation. So the third type of group on this slide actually is two types. It's support and self-help. And I put these together because they're very similar and there's a lot of overlap in terms of the way people define support groups and self-help groups. The terms are sometimes used interchangeably. Support and self-help groups focus on specific issues. And a popular example of a support group uh, is Alcoholics Anonymous. 
They provide to group members a sense of being connected to one another, and sometimes they do not have a trained facilitator. This would be a group where it would be unusual for a mental health counselor to be a facilitator. So moving on to counseling groups. Now when one thinks of mental health counseling, the counseling group is probably the type of group that comes to mind first. It's oriented towards personal growth. Often the area of focus is a type of developmental problem. For example, a social, interpersonal, or educational problem. These type of groups are designed to create a supportive environment where members can discover and explore strengths and find ways to enhance those strengths. There is an emphasis in counseling groups on the here and now interactions and it's through these interactions that we hope that group members learn from each other and work towards solving the developmental problem which is the area of focus. The members in counseling groups set personal goals and unlike some other types of groups these goals can be diverse uh, meaning some groups uh, the goal is more or less the same for every group member in a counseling group the goal is individual to each group member it's unique to each group member facilitators in counseling groups encourage the use of insight to promote positive action it should be noted that this positive action and the movement toward the personal goals in a counseling group is not typically related to the remediation of any type of mental health disorder. Rather, common goals would be a member learning to trust other people, to increase their awareness of their own personal identity, to improve their social skills or clarify their own values, to increase self-respect and self-confidence, or to develop compassion and respect for others. Notice in those examples of goals, there is no real mention of mental health symptoms. So that brings me to the last type of group, that I'll be talking about, which is psychotherapy. Now, psychotherapy groups are designed to remediate severe mental health disorders. And they are not psychoeducational groups, but they do have an educational component. Unlike counseling groups, which, as I mentioned, tend to stay in the here and now, psychotherapy groups emphasized how the past contributes to the client's current problems. The group interactions are used to encourage the awareness of how the past contributes. Additionally, a group facilitator will attempt to promote corrective emotional experiences using the group process. Psychotherapy groups compared to counseling groups are long-term, which makes sense given the goal of the group, which is the remediation of severe mental health disorders and severe mental health disorder symptoms. Just as was the case with the counseling group, it would be fairly common for a mental health counselor to be the facilitator in the psychotherapy group. Just as a reminder, even though we do think of counseling and psychotherapy groups as uh, more appropriate venues for a mental health counselor to facilitate, training is needed at some level to be a facilitator for any of these type of groups. Although sometimes support and self-help groups do not have a facilitator, uh, when a facilitator is indicated, training is indicated. So it's important that mental health counselors are aware of the different 
dynamics, processes, and goals associated with task, psychoeducational, support, counseling, and psychotherapy groups. I hope you found this video helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.